Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. To kick off today's video, we have another launch of Falcon 9 coming up in a few days with another Starlink mission. As you can see on the SpaceX fans website, the Starlink Group 4-8 mission is expected to lift off on Sunday 20th at 2.54pm UTC or 9.54am Eastern Time. There is some very big and exciting news about future crewed missions that was announced. Christian Davenport posted this tweet saying, Jared Isaacman who led the first all-private citizen mission to orbit has commissioned three more flights from SpaceX. This tweet was posted saying, We are proud to introduce the Polaris program a first of its kind effort to rapidly advance human spaceflight capabilities while continuing to raise funds and awareness for important causes on Earth. There was an additional tweet posted by them saying, Our first mission, Polaris Dawn, launches no earlier than the fourth quarter of 2022. Of course, Jared Isaacman also posted a tweet about the new Polaris program. He said, Exciting time in commercial spaceflight. Polaris program will undertake a series of tech demo missions culminating in first flight of Starship. Polaris posted another interesting and exciting tweet saying the crew will attempt the first commercial spacewalk with SpaceX designed extravehicular activity suits upgraded from the current intravehicular suit. Polaris posted a tweet today saying the Polaris Dawn crew visited the suit lab at SpaceX headquarters this week to see progress on the new SpaceX EVA spacesuits which are upgrades of the current IVA suits. Elon Musk posted a tweet saying over 250k Starlink user terminals. Somebody responded and said, I am one of them, love it. Thanks for being this online. It is only getting better with every new satellite constellation launch. Will upload latency get better when all satellites become laser? Musk then responded to that with yes, but more ground stations and improved packet routing will make a bigger difference. Heading to Boca Chica, here's a view of the orbital launch site. Methane was seen delivered to the orbital tank farm as they get ready for some testing. As mentioned last video, here are some clips from the Starship presentation last Thursday. In the first clip, Elon Musk mentioned what SpaceX's ultimate goal is with Starship production. Our, our goal is to be making at least uh, a, a one stack per month, uh, and then ultimately um, potentially a ship every three days. Uh, th there'll be more ships than there are boosters. He also mentioned how long it would take to bring a booster back. The booster actually, even though it's gigantic, uh, will come back in about six minutes. Um, excitement guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it only takes about two minutes on ascent and then about four minutes to return. So uh, you'll know soon. Something else he mentioned was about Starship flights and reuse times. The, the, the ship uh, has to complete at least one orbit around Earth and sometimes uh, maybe three orbits or, or more. Uh, and each orbit is 90 minutes. So the ship uh, is probably, you know, er, reusable about every uh, six, six to eight hours. That's, uh, that's why we say sort of three times a day for the ship. But in theory, the the booster is capable of being uh, reused every hour. He also mentioned that Starship will probably get a little longer and what payload capacity it will be able to send to different orbits. But it'll probably get a little bit longer. And uh, we're expecting a payload capacity of uh, 100 to 150 tons, depending on, on which orbit. Um, so to, uh, to a Starlink orbit, uh, it, roughly 100 tons. Um, yeah. Over time, I think we can probably get the the orbit for um, orbital refilling, the, the, the payload to an orbit for orbital refilling to about 200 tons, uh, which is going to be very important for uh, getting to Mars. Musk talked a bit about the improvements of Raptor 2. And V2 is uh, greatly simplified while also increasing thrust at the same time. So it's, it actually, um, Raptor 2 costs about half as much as Raptor 1, despite having much more thrust. Uh, and I think just generally being um, a, a much easier engine to build uh, and a more robust engine. He also talked in some more details about the Raptor 2 changes and improvements. R Raptor 2 is uh, an almost complete redesign relative to Raptor 1. So basically everything from the turbo machinery to the, the, the chamber nozzle, uh, the electronics, um, 
basically everything's been been redesigned. You can see the the difference over there, the Raptor One versus Raptor Raptor Two. Musk talked about when he expects to reach orbit by and some Raptor production information. At this point, highly confident that we'll get to orbit this year. Um, that's you know we're, we're making a lot of rockets, making a lot of engines. We're we're close to achieving um, one ra a Raptor two uh, every day production rate. So we're sort of seven a week. Also, when asked more about Raptor progress, Musk talked about an issue they are having. The only remaining issue that we're aware of is melting the chamber. Um, so <laughs> that thing really wants to melt, you know. It's got like on the order of a gigawatt of, of heat, so it's pretty hot. Like a gigawatt's like a, what a nuclear power plant produces. So it really is desperately trying to melt at any point in time. Um, so. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, we're flowing an uh, immense amount of, of, of cryogenic fuel to cool the, the, the chamber in the channels. Uh, we have uh, head-end uh, film cooling, we've got uh, throat film cooling, and we're just trying to get the uh, exact sort of balance between uh, head-end film cooling and uh, throat film cooling uh, to not melt the chamber. Another Raptor thing mentioned is... You know, like, like next week we'll probably make at least five or six uh, Raptor 2s, for example. Yeah. Um, and I think we'll be at, at a seven a week or, or better by next month. Elon Musk mentioned a bit on what they plan for Starship missions. We have some upcoming uh, uh, Starship missions. Uh, orbital flight is really just the beginning. Uh, so we, we're, we're going to have um, a number of Starlink uh, missions uh, that will launch uh, Starlink Satellite Version 2. Um, but uh, even more exciting than that is the, the NASA uh, Human Space Flight mission. Um, and then th there's also uh, the Dear Moon mission, which is uh, um, uh, going to take um, artists around the moon. And um, that's... Uh, Isaku Miyazawa, and he, he's uh, gonna, gonna select, uh, I think, a dozen artists and, um, and, and do a loop around the moon, which will be very exciting. And there's gonna be some uh, future announcements that I think people will be pretty fired up about. Elon Musk also talked a bit about their plans for a launch site at Cape Canaveral. We, we, are, we are building a, uh, a launch site, uh, a Starship uh, launch, launch tower at uh, 39A at uh, Cape Kennedy. And um, we are also building a Starship production facility at, at the Cape. So we'll have a production facility and launch site here and a production facility and launch site at the Cape as well. Musk was asked about the time frame for orbital flight test based on the environmental investigation. Well, we don't have, uh, I, we don't have a ton of insight into the, where things stand with the FAA. Um, we have gotten sort of a, a rough indication that there, there may be an approval uh, in March, but that, that's all we know. Musk was also asked what's next if they don't get the FAA approval. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am optimistic that we will get approval. Um, for, um, like I think they're, objectively, I think this is not uh, something that will be um, harmful to the environment. We've obviously uh, flown uh, the ship several times um, and done you know multiple landings and you know takeoff landings. We've, we've fired the engines a lot, so um, I think um, the, the the reality is that the, that it would not have a significant impact. He was also asked how it will affect SpaceX if the FAA needs an EIS. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it would it would obviously set us back uh, for quite some time because uh, an EIS takes a lot longer than uh, an EA. Um, uh, so we would, we would have to shift our priorities to uh, Cape Kennedy. Elon Musk talked about the Cape being an alternative. So um, now we do have the alternative of the Cape um, and um, we, we actually applied for environmental approval for launch from the Cape uh, a few years ago and received it. So uh, we actually are approved from an environmental standpoint to launch from 39A. Uh, so I guess our worst case scenario is that uh, we would, uh, I don't know, be, be delayed for, for six, six or six to eight months uh, to build up uh, the, the Cape launch tower and launch from there. Another thing talked about is how much it could cost per flight of Starship. I mean, from a cost standpoint, I mean, it's a hundred ton capability to orbit. 
uh, on a marginal cost to launch basis. Uh, you know, that doesn't count fixed costs, which obviously have to be covered. It, it may be as little as a few million dollars per flight. Um, maybe even as low as a million dollars per flight. He was asked, what is the future role of Starbase? Uh, the future role of Starbase, I think, um, it's, it's well suited to be kind of like our um, advanced R&D location. So it's like where we would try out uh, new designs and uh, new versions of the rocket. There was a question related to a possible abort system on Starship. Uh, Starship will not have um, an independent abort system, but I think something that would make sense is to have the thruster weight of the ship uh, be enough that uh, it could do um, a, a, a it, 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 it could take off from uh, the booster, even if the booster has a failure at the pad level. There was also a question about life support systems. From a life support standpoint, uh, uh, we would um, have a, uh, a, a sort of a re re sort of a, a renewable, like a, for for long, you know, we we, we could scale up uh, the life support system in Dragon. That would certainly be an option. Um, and, and that would work for uh, missions that are, say, um, a week or, or two weeks. That, that, that would be fine. For missions to, to Mars, uh, you, you'd want uh, a life support system that uh, is renewable. Musk was asked about hardware flight readiness if and when they get FAA approval. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we're uh, close to having the hardware ready to go. Um, so right now, I think we're, we're tracking to have the um, regulatory approval and hardware readiness around the same time. You know, ho hopefully, you know, you know, basically a couple months for, for both. Another question was about using the oil rigs Phobos and Deimos for Starship operations. Yeah, so Phobos and Deimos thus far have been um, a relatively low priority. Uh, we needed to make the launch site here uh, work. Um, this has been you know, quite a difficult endeavor. Um, so we deprioritized the uh, Phobos and Deimos, um, and ju just last month we 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 started to um, we're going to take uh, one of them and 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 build at least a catch tower on it. So uh, and and ultimately we will ultimately meaning like I don't know later this year <laughs> um, uh, build a, a a full launch capability um, on. Um, on one of the platforms. So I think pro hopefully by the end of this year we, we will have uh, a launch capability at Cape Kennedy at 39A and uh, on one of the, the, the ocean platforms as well. There was a question about orbital refilling and frequency of launches related to that. The missions would, would happen pretty fast for um, refilling the, the vehicles uh, to minimize boil off of the cryogenic propellants. Um, so um, now for the for the vehicle going to the moon, uh, we uh, have some uh, insulation uh, to, to minimize uh, boil off. Um, uh, but we'd probably be launching, I don't know, probably uh, every few hours, um, aspirationally. Musk was asked a question about how the Starship interior designs are progressing. Uh, uh, we, we, have, we aren't focusing a lot on the interior quite yet. I mean, that will be important down the road, but uh, our focus right now is just getting to orbit and proving out uh, return of the booster and return of the ship. In relation to the FAA environmental assessment, which is ongoing, the FAA posted a tweet. They said the FAA continues its programmatic environmental assessment for the proposed SpaceX Starship Super Heavy project in Boca Chica, Texas. The new target date for issuing the final PEA is March 28th. This Starship common dome section was seen being flipped in the yard. Ship 20 was de-stacked from Booster 4 just a few days after the presentation as they press on. Elon Musk posted a really cool video from inside the area between Starship 20 and Booster 4 as they de-stacked them. The tank section of Starship 22 was seen moved out of the mid bay and into the high bay. 
The nose cone previously for Starship 21 was then stacked with the body inside the high bay. Booster 4 is now on its own on the orbital launch mount. Taking a look at the road and beach closures on the Cameron County website we can hopefully expect some testing this week. There was a closure for yesterday that was cancelled, however there are still closures scheduled for today Wednesday 16th, tomorrow Thursday 17th as well as Friday 18th. The Booster 7 liquid oxygen tank section was seen moved inside the high bay. To finish up the video today thanks to Brendan Lewis again there is an updated Starbase production diagram. You can see the full stack Starship is no longer, Ship 21 has been removed and Ship 22 is now fully stacked. As always I have to say thanks to Mary known as Boca Chica Gal for being out there filming the Starbase content. As well thanks to Nick Ansuini for being out there filming some of the content in this video too. Also thanks to the NASA spaceflight team working behind the scenes on their videos, live streams and other space content. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX show, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.